So I'm here at BGGCon 2014 with Patrick from Crash Games. Yes. Right. Um, what have you got to talk to? Uh, board games. Woohoo! Board games. Yes. All kinds of board games. Okay. What do you want to hear about? Uh, Council of Verona. So Council of Verona is a uh, micro uh, bluff introduction game uh, set in the world of Romeo and Juliet. Um, it is going to be on uh, Will Wheaton's uh, tabletop by Geek and Sundry. Um, and uh, it is part of my pub series. So it's a game designed for you to take into a bar, into a restaurant, and play in a very small space. Uh, two to five players, about 15 to 20 minutes to play. And how um, difficult is it to learn? Uh, not difficult at all. It's very simple. It's just a card game with two types of cards. Um, and so what you're doing is you're taking on the role of a, a citizen of Verona and you're lending your influence to various characters uh, throughout the story. So for example, uh, Romeo and Juliet just want to be together. Uh, they don't care whether it's in the council or exile as long as they're together because they're two lovers and, and they just want to do their thing. Uh, and then you have different characters vying for power of the council, like the Lord Capulet and Lord Montague. Um, and so those cards have agendas on them and players have influence tokens. So if you if you have your influence tokens on a card whose agenda is met by the end of the game, you'll score those points. And then there's ability cards like Lady Capulet, and Lady Montague, uh, Count Paris, uh, and other characters that have special abilities, like Count Paris will let you peek at two tokens. Like the, the Disney Channel has taught me never to trust anybody with slick back hair and a thin goatee. Yeah, you can't trust uh, No, you can't. Very untrustworthy. Very Jafar-like. Yeah. Um, and so uh, he'll let you peek at two tokens because he's, he's, he's a bit sneaky like that. And then you have like the ladies of the house are able to swap tokens. So there's, uh, it's very, it sounds like there's a lot going on, but the characters are very easy to learn. Um, because the theme and the mechanics for this game are truly intertwined. And so you don't have to be familiar with the story of Romeo and Juliet, uh, but if you are, you'll appreciate it uh, that much more. Okay. So that's uh, by far uh, my most popular game right now. But I, my next three games haven't been out yet, so I don't know what's the new popular one. Okay. Um, but Council of Rona, I've uh, been very fortunate enough to sell about 5,000 copies of this uh, so far. I'm printing a bunch more since we're going to be on tabletop, so cross your fingers. <laughs> We'll, and, we'll see. And how do players place influence during the game? Do they have cards that they play to place the Yeah, influence? so on their turn, a player is going to play a card to one of the two locations. And then um, if they have influence tokens left, because you're only going to have three in a, a three to five player game. So it's very tight. Yeah, it's very, very refined, very streamlined. Uh, your choices, they're all meaningful. Um, and so, and it, but it's a quick enough game to where, oh, if you felt like you did something wrong, you jump right into an next game. It's only 15 minutes, you know, to play. And so then on your turn, you're going to choose to place an influence token. No one owns the cards once they hit the table, right? You're going to have a small hand of cards anywhere between uh, three to five, depending upon how many people you're playing. And then you're playing them to one of the two locations and then choosing to place or not place a token. Uh, and so not a, not a lot to do on your turn, but it's, it's a, a good story that, uh, that evolves as the game plays. Right, excellent. Yeah, and so that's Council of Verona. Awesome. Look forward to it on tabletop. Yes, me too. <laughs> I'll be watching right alongside everybody else. <laughs>